Time for our health report and joining us now is Africa 54 Health correspondent Lino Madu with some news on the global fight against the Zika virus. Hello Lino. Hello Vanson. Outbreaks of Zika continue to be identified in new geographic regions. Singapore has reported more than 240 Zika cases while Malaysia and Thailand have also reported infections. So America has, South America has borne the brunt of the virus impact, especially in Brazil, where hundreds of cases of microcephaly have been confirmed since the outbreak in 2015. Zika transmitted by the Aedes aegypti mosquitoes is linked to the birth defect microcephaly in children and neurological disorder Guillain-Barre. The World Health Organization's Zika Emergency Committee warned recently that Zika remains an international concern. These deliberations decided that the situation continues to constitute a public health emergency of international concern. And this is because new outbreaks of Zika continue to be identified in new geographic regions. There are knowledge gaps that remain in the full scope of the disease. In other words, it's natural history. What does infection do? What are the, all the side effects and all the effects that occur from infection in the fetus and also infection in adults? Scientists say more than 2 billion people could be at risk from Zika virus outbreaks in parts of Africa and Asia, writing in the Lancet Infectious Diseases. The research team from London's School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine Oxford University and the University of Toronto say populations in India, Indonesia and Nigeria are some of the most vulnerable to transmission. Researchers looked at factors such as the numbers of people who travel from Zika-affected areas in South America to Africa and Asia, the presence of mosquitoes that can pass on the virus and the climate in the regions. They say vast numbers of people are living in environments where it will be hard to prevent, detect and respond to the virus. However, they acknowledge that immunity to the virus could already exist in some areas and could reduce the risk. For more on the risk of Zika in Africa, joining me live via Skype from Geneva, Switzerland, is Christian Lindmeier, spokesperson for the World Health Organization. Mr. Lindmeier, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me, Lina. So, first of all, what are the chances of uh, this Zika outbreak spreading to Africa? Well, let's put it this way. It's already there in Africa. It has been there since a long time. Um, it started, as you know, in the 40s, as much as we know so far, end of the 40s, uh, possibly in, uh, in Uganda, uh, had its way around Africa and then went eastwards uh, through Asia into the Pacific and then finally what we have seen then uh, recently in, in Latin America. So the interesting part here is for us as scientists, uh, but of course for the population as well, why did the African population or many populations on the way uh, of, the, of the virus not experience such heavy uh, disease or such a heavy outcome of some, uh, of some impact, uh, birth defects like microcephaly, um, as we have seen in Brazil? Exactly. This is the, the important part. Exactly. And uh, why has this been the case? Why haven't we seen uh, this major concern in Africa in the past? What we know so far is that we can talk about two different lineages of the virus. We have a lineage which we call the African lineage because it's what we mainly find on continental Africa. Uh, and I say continental because uh, Cabo Verde, Cape Verde is, is an exemption to it. We'll come to this maybe in a moment. And the other part, the other lineage, uh, onwards from Africa, we call this at this point Asian uh, lineage. Uh, what we have seen is that the Asian lineage has caused more, um, is the one responsible at, to this point, what we know, for microcephaly and triggers Guillain-Barré syndrome. We have not seen this at this point, I have to stress, um, at the African lineage. Is there a difference Yet, of strain? The, tell us about the strain. It's a different type of strain, right? It's a different type of strain. It's a bit of a difficult explanation and technically, but maybe one should see it as, as in, a, in a family situation.
situation. Uh, the children of, of, uh, of, of parents are never exactly the same as, as the parents. And, this, and, and the virus is a living organism, and it adapts to everywhere it goes. And I'm not saying it mutates. I'm, I'm literally only saying it adapts, because wherever it goes, it, it adapts to the living conditions. It adapts to the population living on the ground, to the environmental uh, okay. factors. So uh, uh, that's, that's why it changes all the time. Uh, and what triggered the extreme um, conditions in northeastern Brazil, why we have not seen that in other areas, that remains still something to find. Five seconds. Is there some immu immunity? Uh, has there been some in immunity developed in Africa? This is a very important question, which we do not have a final answer. Okay. For. That's what scientists are looking into, and that's important to know whether uh, what whether the Zika virus maybe has been around Africa for much longer than what we know, okay. uh, and maybe in other parts of the world as well. And people have developed a certain immunity, as you just point out, and would be uh, slightly protected uh, towards part of this, uh, the other strains as well. This is an important uh, piece of knowledge we need to find still, and the experts are looking into it. Oh, okay. At this point, because we don't have it, it's very important, it remains very important to keep the personal protection up, because we simply don't have all the answers yet. Okay, Mr. Lindmeyer, thank you so much for joining us.